Folks, each weekend with the Weather Network's Fidelity Investments Powder Patrol. Play Meet Your Match, qualify, and you could win fabulous ski gear from Head to Rolia or one of 21 ski and snowboard vacations to one of these great resorts. Here's where we'll be skiing this weekend. The Weather Network's Fidelity Investments Powder Patrol, brought to you by Fidelity Investments, where 15 million investors put their trust. And Land Rover, you can do anything. See you on the slopes. Visit us online at theweathernetwork.com. Hello, I'm Ashton Hassan, and this is Weekend Report News for Saturday, March 25th. Many residents in southwestern and central Ontario are enjoying a beautiful spring day today. A southerly flow of mild air has propelled temperatures to between 17 and 20 degrees Celsius in many places. Throughout the region, people strolled around in t-shirts and sunglasses. Outdoor cafes report brisk business and many who own convertibles are leaving the top down. However, all good things must come to an end. A cold front is pushing across the area and that will drop temperatures back to near seasonal by tonight. Meanwhile, outside of Calgary, farmers are happy after the region saw wet snow on Thursday. Officials from Alberta Agriculture say farmers need the moisture to get their crops started. They say any precipitation they get now will help ease the chance of a dry summer. The snow wasn't good news for everyone, though. Road conditions were extremely bad, and that resulted in numerous accidents and one traffic fatality. Thirteen students from a Chicago university are spending their spring break in Toronto. It's part of Environment Canada's ecological monitoring program, a chance for students to do outdoor research on one of the Toronto islands. Chris McDermott has this report. Yes. Yeah, it's dead. dead These students spend eight months a year studying at Northwestern University in Chicago. But when spring break rolled around, they decided that Florida or Cancun wasn't for them. So they joined a group called Alternative Spring Break, which offers students the chance to spend time away from campus at low cost, while making new friends and learning about nature. This is uh, part of the Alternative Spring Break program from Northwestern. And there's about 18 groups in different parts of the United States, and uh, this is the only group to Canada. It all started when a representative contacted Environment Canada, looking for the opportunity for students to study nature. Here, they study trees. The goal is to identify, measure, and tag every tree in a one-hectare forest plot on Ward Island, south of downtown Toronto. What we're trying to collect is baseline information on the types of trees that are growing here, the types of shrubs, the types of ground vegetation. They're working in cooperation with the Smithsonian Institute and a UNESCO biodiversity program. The concern here is that urban centers are rapidly losing their green spaces. We're going to the top of the Imperial Bank of Commerce, which was the tallest building at that time in the city, and looking out and just marveling at how green the city was. And uh, if you go to the top of the CN Tower now and look out, there's definitely uh, a vast difference. Trips that have, have meaning both in terms of helping like uh, during the week and also having meaning on a, on a greater level. And I think that's been really effective in this case. The Smithsonian hopes to increase the monitoring network, helping to establish the largest grouping of biodiversity monitoring plots in the world. For the Weather Network, I'm Chris McDermott in Toronto. South of the border, unusually dry weather and a lack of power lines in New Mexico have resulted in the state's largest outage ever. Smoke from a recent grass fire triggered a short circuit that shut down all three transmission lines, feeding Albuquerque and surrounding areas. In all, 1.6 million people were left in the dark. The lack of rain has also sparked dozens of wildfires, charring more than 75,000 hectares of land. Overseas, a cargo plane crashed during a heavy rainstorm in Colombo, Sri Lanka, killing six crew members and three others on the ground. Two others on board the Russian-built plane are in serious condition in hospital. Nearby residents say they felt the ground shake when the crash occurred. The plane was carrying textiles from Thailand. At least two people are dead and 50 families are homeless after torrential rains caused rivers to overflow in eastern Colombia. The floods also triggered mudslides which swept through towns and villages leaving a trail of destruction. Homes were engulfed in thick sludge while cars and trucks disappeared in the mud. 
Now that the rains have mostly stopped in Mozambique, the difficult task of rebuilding begins. The flood swept away homes uh, or livelihoods of one in ten people. Crops in fertile river valleys in central and southern parts of the country are destroyed. The bill for emergency aid for just the coming six months has been estimated at $165 million. And finally, there is a trade-off taking place at NASA. The space agency says it will make a controlled descent of its Compton Gamma Ray Observatory into the Pacific Ocean on June 3rd. The reason is because of faulty stabilizing gyroscopes in the nine-year-old spacecraft. And that's a look at the news for this half hour. I'll have more in 25 minutes' time. Now here's your local forecast.